All right, we're here at my tiny worm bin, and the things that you see here are various things that I've taken out of this bin. Inside here are some avocado shells that we had used in our last experiment to see if we could bait out some of the worms with the avocado shells, and they collected some mites. So what I've done is I took them out, and I kind of broke them up, and we dried them out. So we're gonna put them in this container and we are going to shred them with the coffee slash nut grinder of my magic bullet. And then we're gonna reintroduce them when we do our feeding. Right here is the newspaper that's been on there for a while. And again, I took that out and dried it out. They did have some mites on them. So we're also gonna reintroduce this, but maybe into the next bin. And then finally, here's our little burlap sack. I took it inside out and I cleaned it out first, making sure there's no worms in there. And you can see it is really threadbare compared to when we first had it in there. And right there is a tiny worm that I'm just gonna make sure makes it into the bin. And then finally, what I wanted to show you is that because there were some mites in here, I wanted to try a little baiting out and I used some wet bread and I put it in there and I did it for off and on for a couple hours at a time yesterday. And then this morning I switched some out. So let's pull these up and see how many mites are on there. All right. So Relatively speaking, there's not too many on there, and I'm just going to rinse these down the sink and get rid of all these mites in the bread. So here we go. Here's what the bin looks like after 139 days, and it is mostly castings. It's pretty incredible. And you also see just little pieces of paper that are taking a while to break down, but I'm not too worried about that because when we sift them, those will all come out. And here's a little piece of avocado shell that I must have missed. So it's been a little bit of a busy week in here, just kind of taking out different items and prepping the bin to get harvested and to restart it after we harvest. And I think what's gonna happen is we're gonna do a completely dry feeding. So we're gonna do oats, we're gonna do coffee grounds, and we'll put in some eggshells too, even though that's not a feeding, it's dry. So that will help to get rid of any other mites that are in here, not totally get rid of them, but just kind of decrease their population. And you can see as I'm digging through here, there are worms all throughout. So I'm pretty excited to see how many we come up with. And I am going to count again. If you've been with me for a while, you know I counted these worms about 139 days ago when we started this bin and finished it previously. And we went from less than 100 worms to 492. So I'm hoping that maybe we've got at least 1,000 in here. And I think that might be a good guess for what we have in here. And that may be getting close to the carrying capacity of this bin. At some point, your worms are not going to just keep populating exponentially. They will kind of slow down for you. So let's just kind of go over here on this side and see how things are going. The bin really looks kind of universal as far as worms concentration all throughout it. So they're getting through all the different areas in the bin and eating the different bedding and eating the foods that were in here. So things are looking great. And I don't smell any odors or anything that would lead me to believe that we had any kind of overfeeding pockets or sourness. And by sour, I mean like a fermented situation where maybe not getting enough oxygen. All right, we'll just get this side and then we are going to start our feeding and we are going to kind of feather it in, which just means kind of making an area, put a little bit of dried oats in and then adding some castings back and then continuing to do that. I'm really happy with the, the texture and the consistency of the castings within this bin. And it really is just, you know, perfect, perfect for sifting that kind of thing. I think with just a little bit more dryness, it's really going to do well um, when we count up the worms and then after that when I sift it. So let's go ahead and start feeding. Now, in addition to pulverized oats, I'm also going to put in just regular oats. And again, these are dry, so that's going to help with drying the bin. And I wanted to mention that as we dug through here, none of the previous feeding, which was dry oats, was anywhere to be seen. In fact, when I was coming into the bin, the layer that we had spread on top was completely gone. The worms came up and ate that probably within two days. So here's our pulverized oats that we're gonna just kind of add lightly. And again, I don't want it to clump up, so I'm just gonna put a light feeding in there. And then I'll 
bury that up and then we'll go into the middle. And it's pretty amazing to me how much the worms really enjoy these dried oats, which call it worm chow or whatever you want, but you can put cornmeal or basically any kind of dry grain that you have in your pantry that's expired. We'll add a little bit of dry, and then we'll add a little bit of just whole oats right there. And then we'll go on to the last edge. And as I'm doing this, I just want you to keep in mind Look how tiny this bin is. It really is small. It's a three gallon Rubbermaid tote. And if you're looking for a starter bin, you can certainly find a container of this size to use. But I do wanna say, if you have a small container like this, it can be easier to kind of get the parameters out of whack. And what I mean by that is, if you overfeed a little bit, you can have outsized effects on what's going on with your bin. In a big bin, if you overfeed in one area, it's not that big a deal, the worms can get away. But in a small bin, if you overfeed, then all of a sudden you might get an explosion of mite population. And that's one of the things that happened in this bin. I think it was like the third or fourth week, I wanted to kind of see how much this bin could stand and I overfed it. And then of course, about three weeks later is when I found the mites kind of exploding. And then another time that I found kind of this latest mite boom was when I went from feeding mostly greens and seeing the mite population go way down to the point where I couldn't even really see any and then I went to feeding just a lot of fruits and then oh, once again the mite population gained on me. So let me kind of do our top feeding here with oats and because as usual I forget something I forgot to put the eggshells and coffee I'm going to add those on here too. So in go the dry oats. And then right after this, we're gonna put in a little bit of eggshells and coffee. All right, in go the coffee grains. And this is used spent coffee that then gets dried, sits on my counter for weeks and weeks. So probably a lot of microbial life in there as I add more coffee in each day. And then I'll add a little bit of eggshells. And what's remarkable to me about these pulverized eggshells is I have never come back into the bin and seen clumps of eggshells because they really do like it to use for their digestion in their gizzards and kind of grind their food. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this newspaper on top and that's because I've put all this dry food on top. And the reason I put the newspaper on top when I put a dry feeding like this is because I'll let the moisture kind of come up, hit the newspaper and go down. And then finally, we'll add the lid and you can see that it's got kind of mesh here. So I never have any kind of flying insects issues. So I hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.